How are y'all? Hope you're having a great day. Again, I'm pre-recording this. I had made mention of that in my previous devotion. I'm pre-recording this because I'm going to be having a root canal. <laughs> and so I don't know how that's going to affect me if I'm going to be able to talk, if I'm being pain, whatever. So I should be okay. But just on the chance, I didn't want to miss a devotional. So I'm going, I'm pre-recording this. Right now it is a nasty rainy day. I wish I did not have to go out. James and I have to go run some errands and I've got to go to the dentist for cleaning and then I'll go in a couple days for my root canal. So please be in prayer for me. I appreciate that. So we're going to pick up reading from our devotional, Five Minutes with Jesus, Quiet Time for Your Soul by Sheila Walsh with Sherry Craig. And today's title is Keep My Lamp Burning. So let's just see how God's going to talk to us. The oldest lighthouse in the United States Boston Light first cast its hopeful glow over the harbor in 1716. The light source has changed and improved over the years, advancing from tallow candles to, to whale oil, then to lard oil, and then kerosene. Lighthouse keepers even used cabbage oil for a time. I never knew that was a thing. But one thing has remained the same. A lighthouse keeper always lives on the little outcropping of the rocks and faithfully keeps the light burning. Today, Boston Light boasts the only Coast Guard lighthouse keeper left in the United States, and her name is Sally Snowman. Sally is the 17th keeper of the Boston Light and her stint marks the end of an era. Sally most certainly knows, as did all other lighthouse keepers before her, this truth. To give light away, the fire must first be lit and then maintained. 1 John 1 and verse 5 describe Jesus' presence in the world as a light to the to as a light that penetrated the darkness. Even today, as his followers and, and ambassadors, even today as his followers and ambassadors, we are to be bearers of his light in the hope that those who are lost might safely find their way home to his great love. Nothing can ever take the light of Christ from us, but if we neglect it, the flame becomes dim. One way we can ensure that our lights keep burning brightly is to simply spend time with Jesus, allowing him to re reignite our hearts with his love. When we take time to rest in his presence, we find ourselves renewed and able to shine hope and truth into a world that is helplessly lost in a sea of despair. Do you ever just, do you ever get just plain worn out? It's okay to take time for yourself to rest and refuel. Find a quiet place, even for five minutes, to take a deep breath and remind yourself of the love of Christ of the love Christ has for you. A world in need is counting on us to keep shining the light of Jesus's love. Let's take time with him to be sure that light keeps shining bright, brightly. Let Jesus fill you with the light of his love so all can see the way to him. Mm. Today, our first scripture comes from the book of John. I will be reading from the King James Bible. The book of John chapter 1 and verse 5, and it says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. Comprehend in this text means overpowered. So the light overpowers the darkness. Then we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5, and it says, Ye are the children of light and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. So true. Then we're going to go to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. And it says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. And meet in this text means fit. Made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? In whom we have redemption. Redemption in this text means been set free. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 
Mm, that is, oh, we need that forgiveness, don't we? Okay, then we're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. And it says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, to wit in this text means that it, that is to say, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not inputting. And inputting in, in, in this text means reckoning. Not inputting their trespasses unto them and hath committed us unto us the world of re reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though Christ did beseech you. Beseech in this text means beg you. By, by God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. And that in Christ's stead means on behalf of Christ. Be you reconciled to God. Mm. And then we're going to go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 18 and verse 28. And it says, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. And enlighten in this text means show light on. Mm, so good. Oh, so many thoughts come to mind. The first thing that came to mind as I started reading about the lighthouse, which I love lighthouses. The first thing that came to mind was the song, The Old Lighthouse by... I'm sure it's been by many different people, but the one I've heard years and years was the Henson's. And I love that song. It is such a moving song. It has such a great meaning. And it's just one of those that just tugs at them heartstrings. I love that. And I've always had a fascination with lighthouses too. Um, they have always been so mysterious to me. And, um, I understand in today's world and technology and this and that, they're not as, I guess, needed as much. But, you know, at one time, that was all that would guide the sailors was the lighthouse, you know, and, and the, the lightness and the dark. I mean, it can be so dark. I don't know if you've ever been out in the water in the dark, um, but it's a darkness like no other. It can be kind of like... Um, eerie, kind of, but as usual, I underlined some things that really stood out to me, so I thought I would share that with you. This one really stood out to me. Nothing can ever take the light of Christ from us, but if we neglect it, the flame does become dim. Um, I'm sure if you've dealt with fire in any way, shape, or form, you have to keep stoking the fire if you want it to keep burning bright, you know? I love burning. They call me a pyromaniac because I just love to burn. I just, there's just something about it. It's just one of life's simple pleasures, you know. I love to, we'll be riding down the road and see these big old piles of brush or whatever. And I'm like, oh, you written the lettuce burn it? Because <laughs> I just love to burn. But you have to keep that fire stoked to keep it burning. And same thing with God. Same thing with God. I love how he will reference things um, that will help us understand more. I love that. One way we can ensure that our light keeps burning brightly is to simply spend time with Jesus. It's just that simple. It does not have to be complicated and hard and difficult. It is just simply spend time with Jesus, allowing him to reignite our hearts with his love. And he will. When we take time to rest in his presence, going back to he's wanting us to rest and rest in his presence, we find ourselves renewed and able to shine hope and truth into a world that is helplessly lost in a sea of despair. Y'all, if there was ever a time that we need to let our light shine, it is now more than ever. Because there is so much despair and darkness and hatred and just evil out there. And you do stand out. You do stand out. Um, you stand out when you have the love of God just roaring inside you like a big old blazing fire. You do stand out. Do you ever just get plain worn out? 
Yes, I do. And I'm sure you do too. It's okay to take time to yourself to rest and refuel. We have to. We have to. And it goes back a couple devotions where he's like, you know, when the lights go out, rest in him. Don't let the devil start attacking your mind with stresses and worries and things because we need that rest. And he's there for us to help us. For a quick, quiet place, it's okay to take time for yourself and rest and refuel. Find a quiet place. Here we go again. He's wanting us to find a quiet place. Why? So he can talk to us. So he can minister to us. So he can, we can hear that still, small voice. How many times has he, we've, ref, we've had reference in the last several devotions about finding that quiet place. I know in this text, this means finding a quiet place even for five minutes. Take a deep breath. Remind yourself of the love of Christ has for you. Still, we need that so we can hear him. It's so important. I really love this one. And I love that the last few devotions have kind of played off of each other. They've reiterated what the previous devotions have, um, you know, said. I, I really love that. And I this, I love it. I love it. It's off. I love it. <laughs> and I love you. I pray you have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next one. Let your light shine. Mm -hmm.